it is advantageous to have biplanar fluoroscopy throughout this procedure. The surgeon should palpate the coccyx and sacrotuberous ligament arch. Beginning 1 to 2 cm caudal to the paracoxygeal notch, a 15 to 20 mm paramedian skin incision is then made and carried through the superficial fascia. Alternatively, a midline incision may be used. Blunt dissection is then carried to the parietal fascia. This may be done with the tip of the index finger or a blunt clamp such as an 8-inch curved kelly. The general direction is the midline and anterior border of the sacrum. Penetrating the parietal fascia is necessary to access the presacral space and the anterior surface of the sacrum. This may be accomplished with the tip of the Kelly clamp, the tip of the index finger, or the blunt guide pin. Once the parietal fascia is penetrated, the hole should be enlarged to accept the index finger of the surgeon. The surgeon should continue dissecting with the index finger to create a pathway to the sacrum while gently pushing the rectum anteriorly from the areolar soft tissue plane. The finger should be advanced toward the S1 to S2 intersection, palpating the peritoneum layer of tissue that runs between the rectum and sacrum perpendicular to the two structures, where the rectum transitions to the sigmoid and veers to the left. This interval is approximately where the rectum transitions from abdominal to a retroperitoneal structure. The index fingertip may be used to sweep away the areolar tissue from the anterior surface of the sacrum. Once this interval has been bluntly and safely accessed, then a blunt cannulated trocar may be introduced and under biplanar fluoroscopy, advanced up the anterior surface of the sacrum to the S1 to S2 junction near the midline. Maintaining the midline is essential to avoid the bifurcated vascular and neurologic structures anterior lateral to the sacrum. Once the position midline at the S1 to S2 junction has been confirmed with biplanar fluoroscopy, the desired trajectory to access the L5 to S1 and or the L4 to L5 disc spaces must be established. This trajectory will dictate the entry point of a sacral penetration. Once the trajectory and entry point are established, the blunt cannulated trocar must be held in firm apposition to the anterior bony sacrum point selected. A sharp guide pin is then passed through the cannulated trocar and docked into the sacrum. At this point, careful fluoroscopic confirmation of midline placement and desired trajectory should be re-established. The guide pin may then be advanced under AP and lateral fluoroscopic control into the L5 to S1 disc space. The blunt cannula may then be removed, taking care to leave the sharp guide pin engaged. The trajectory should again be reassessed to assure accurate targeting. Once this has been assured, a series of cannulated dilators is used to sequentially dilate the soft tissue and sacral corticocancellus bone to create a working channel into the L5 to S1 disc space. A working trocar is delivered on the outer diameter of the largest dilator and placed into the sacrum to allow for the planned procedure. This working channel must be placed sufficiently deep into the sacrum to allow absolute confidence that it will be maintained and prohibit any soft tissue from escaping into the operating channel. Once the working channel is in place, progressive drilling of the sacrum to create a channel and preparation of the disc space may be accomplished. This is done with meticulous nucleotomy and disc space preparation utilizing proprietary nitinol disc cutters. To begin the discectomy, the small radial cutter is inserted up the working channel with the sleeve covering the flexible nitinol blade. Once inside the disc space, positioning is confirmed with biplanar fluoroscopy. The blade is then deployed and the nucleus is excised by rotating the handle in quarter turns. Throughout the discectomy, care must be taken to assure adequate annulus remains to protect the adjacent structures. Once the nuclear tissue has been sufficiently cut, the blades are then retracted back into their sheaths before they are removed from the disc space. 
tissue extractors are used to remove the disc material loosened by the cutting devices. The extractor is then deployed and rotated up to six turns. It is then removed and discarded. The cutting and extraction steps may be repeated as necessary to create a thorough nucleotomy.